and former ANC MP Hermanus Lewis is currently underway. <laughs> Director of the program, <coughs> Comrade Jeff Hadebe, Mrs. Josephine Lutz and the Lutz family, Deputy President Sir Ramaphosa, former Deputy President Kalima Montlante, ministers and deputy ministers present here, the officials of the ANC, leadership of the ANC, leadership of the South African Communist Party, leadership of COSATU, leadership of SANCO, leadership of the MKMVA, leadership and all the veterans who are here with us. All the veterans of our struggle at different levels, leadership of religious sectors, members of the diplomatic corps, comrades and friends, fellow mourners. We have gathered here today to bid farewell to one of the finest cadres produced by our revolution, Comrade Armanus Gabriel Lutz, who was popularly known in the ranks of the movement as James Stewart. We received the news of the passing 
of Comrade Hermanus on the second day of our ANC National Executive Committee, Le Khutla, on the 25th of January in Pretoria. We were saddened at the loss of this leader of our movement and a highly regarded and much loved veteran of our liberation movement. The passing of Comrade Lutz is a stark reminder that death continues to rob us of our veterans who possess the much needed wisdom acquired over many years in the struggle for freedom, justice, and equality. Compatriots, what is also special about Comrade Lutz is that he was part of the much celebrated Lutuli detachment, as we have heard, which confronted both the apartheid and the Ian Smith forces in battle in the Wankis Polilo campaign of 1967 and beyond. The Lutuli detachment was made up of combatants who epitomized selflessness and who were prepared to lay down their lives for the freedom of others. Their lives symbolized all that was noble about our struggle for freedom. The Tuli Detachment was the first big detachment of MK composed of many who were volunteers of the ANC. Many of them are around here who have come to say farewell to Comrade Stuart. Comrades and patriots, there are many outstanding traits in Comrade Stuart's key amongst all is his undying loyalty to his organization, the ANC, and this country, and its people. And his willingness to do everything possible to make South Africa a better place to live in, especially for the poor. He remained committed, firstly, to the freedom of his people, and later after our freedom, to the building of the nation, and to make South Africa become a prosperous country for every citizen. The fact that Comrade Stewart sacrificed an opportunity to go to Wurz University to study to become a civil engineer in the 1960s and instead joined MK indicates that his priority was to live in a free South Africa. And he was determined 
to play a part in securing that freedom. In other words, like many MK and ANC members generally, he put the nation first, not himself, by taking what others have referred to as a national decision to liberate a nation. The living conditions of black people in Johannesburg in the 60s had awakened his political consciousness and had sharpened his resolve to fight for the liberation of his people. Politics helped him to look at the country more than perhaps many did who said we are oppressed, we don't know what to do. He said we are oppressed, we know what to do, we must fight to liberate ourselves. In joining MK, he was demonstrating his willingness to pay the ultimate price for the liberation of his country and his people. He made his mark in the ANC and MK in exile, serving in many capacities with diligence until he was elected into its National Executive Committee in 1985, in one of the historic conferences of the ANC held in Zambia. A conference that took very far-reaching decisions to take the struggle forward. Whilst, as you have heard, he had been a leader in many capacities in the military activities but this time around in this year, the membership of the ANC saw him as fitting that he becomes the member of the National Executive Committee and therefore became a leader at a particular level of the ANC, being elected by membership of the ANC to become the National Executive Committee member. He possessed ability, the ability to elevate himself from a situation in order to make a fair and sound judgment. And he did this not by announcing or prom promoting himself, but by working hard, recognized by others that it does need to be elevated, by being given some tasks that would not be given to anyone. It is this rare quality of objectivity which promoted him in the eyes of the leadership, particularly President O. R. Tambo, to trust him with the sensitive task to chair a commission investigating the causes and extent of instability and the mutiny in some MK camps in Angola. It took the National Executive Committee a long time to discuss, 
to say who could undertake this task, who will fit in understanding in the first instance the ANC and its values and policies, but who also will understand the military, who is one of, at that time, senior MK cadres, who would be able to understand and discuss what had happened without fear or favor. In the meeting that appointed Comrade James Stewart, or our captain saying he is the most objective, and he was objective. He was never taken by those who move in one side or the other. He always stood firm to correct principles. And this is what made the leadership to feel he should lead that commission. It were his qualities among many. And nobody would have intimidated Stuart. No would have told Stuart to play tricks. Very straightforward and very objective. And indeed, he did that work and produced a report that helped the leadership to understand what had happened. And the report, because he chaired that <clears throat> commission, was called the Stewart Commission. It became very famous commission because it dealt with very difficult issues that faced MK at the time. Like a true cadre and a revolutionary who always responded positively when duty calls, he agreed to chair the Stuart Commission, which was named after him and ensured that it executed all its responsibilities diligently to the satisfaction of everyone. Comrade James Stewart, like many comrades during the struggle, was trusted by his colleagues, by leadership. Never would he, at any given time, say anything ill about another comrade. As the general was saying here, if he thought you were doing something wrong, he will talk to you. He will not gossip about you, nor talk to the public about you. He will talk to you so that he will be constructive to you. Because it is different when you don't confront a comrade and say, I don't agree what you are doing. The response of that comrade <clears throat> will also be respectful. But if you gossip, then you make the comrade angry. If you talk about the comrade, not to him, about him in public, then we are not helping the comrade. But the comrade might not know he's making a mistake, but he needs you as a comrade. This word comrade is a word that <clears throat> I don't know in other language. I know it in Zulu. I'm a felon daoin, meaning we'll die in one place. You cannot do any harm. If you are behind me, I trust. In fact, if you say to a person or a comrade, it's more than your siblings. 
as others call it, comrade in arms, which tells you how serious the word is. The commission brought to the fore some of the inconsistencies in the camps, which the leadership needed to attend to urgently in the interest of the unity and coercion of our movement. In other words, Comrade Stewart produced a report that pointed directly to the problems, whether they were touching on the leadership or on the cadres, it was balanced. That was Comrade Stewart, trusted as he was. When there was a need at one point for a stronger representative in Madagascar, Stewart was sent there as a result of his leadership position because that area had become important. We had established the Radio Freedom Station. He needed to be there to guide the young people who were working on the Radio Freedom, but also because the island is far, to give a rounded leadership and represent the organization. Fortunately for him, why tall in Duga Zizwe? What Kaula call? He went there on his own. When he came back, he came back with the family. We're so happy. Because the fact of the matter is that everyone was growing up there. And people like Stuart, who were not very, very young, not very, very old, you began to say, but when we shall we go home? So it was important to begin to find something, like a family. But thank you very much, our sister and comrade, because you became a companion of Comrade Stuart. Since that time, a wonderful marriage until the time he departed. After the unbending of the organizations, he participated in the negotiations, as we have heard, as part of the ANC team and subsequently became a member of parliament under the presidency of Nelson Mandela. Little is said about negotiations, because he was part of those who were strategizing about the, the negotiations. And I know very little is said, because the ANC demonstrated the caliber of, leader, of leadership that it had under the leadership of Mandela and Stuart was there. He was one of those, as we have described, very quiet, very humble, not talking too much, talks when there is a need to talk. Because he always said things, not just for anything, except as we, we were very friendly, he was a friend of others, except when he was just joking. But normally, when the matters were serious, he was a serious man. Of course, he served in parliament from 1994 to 1999 sharing his experience and expertise in the Joint Standing Committees of Defense when he left Parliament for the private sector. He continued to contribute to the transformation of the country in the economic domain. 
In fact, now that we are at home, we don't meet always. When I met him in a business delegation, I was shocked that Stuart is now a business person. And he was serious. He was a business person. But also joked about where he came from in the Eastern Cape and said, you did not know I'm very royal, by the way. <laughs> He's among the few of the veterans who constantly came to ANC headquarters as a delegation to brief the leadership, particularly because one of, not just one, more than one of the businesses he was engaged in were linked to <clears throat> comrades. But he would come at times when there is nothing, just to say I'm here to say hello. That tells you what has been said here, how much he lived <clears throat> as an ANC cadre. And as the pastor said, he believed and loved the ANC with everything he has, as he loved the church. And we are happy to hear that. <clears throat> so unlike many of us, that at times when you meet to say, hey, got to Pusongele's cut, he always came to headquarters. Comrades and compatriots, in Comrades James Stewart, we are also celebrating the life of a leader and cadre who believed in youth development and in the need to invest in the future of our young people. We are happy that this has been confirmed by the family when he said, no steward or no Lutz should not be educated. Every young people must be educated. He, he believed in the youth, that they are the ones to take the country forward. He played a major role in the formation of the ANC Young Pioneers, known as the Masupa Tsela. He knew that the younger generation must be trained and well equipped to lead this country in the future. Through Comrade Lewis, we remember and salute all MK soldiers, those who are alive and those who have passed on. We'll always carry with us a permanent debt of gratitude, in particular to the Lutuli detachment who displayed determination and fearlessness as they fought for freedom in their land. They were among the first South Africans under the leadership of the ANC to take a decision to become soldiers and fight and be a cutting edge of our struggle and therefore change the complexion of our struggle. What you heard from the general talking here, the positions that Lourdes held, serious positions. Yes, a commander, the army must be commanded. But a commissar is a political leader of the army who must therefore entrench and develop politics of the comrades, but also ensure that the decisions taken by the commander are political, are correct.
These are the traits that comrade James Stewart possessed, a leader, a comrade, a friend, a brother, a humble man, absolutely correct pastor, but a man of principles. Comrades, today we lay to rest an unsung hero and a humble servant of the people of South Africa. We lay to rest a kind man who cared deeply about the well-being of others, especially those in, in, in MK camps. He fought for a truly united, non-racial, non-sexist, democratic and prosperous society. A society without poverty and inequality, and one in which all feel a sense of belonging in their own country. A society where all have access to a better life and dignity. He fought for the society described in the Freedom Charter, where South Africans would live together in harmony, united in their diversity, with equal access to the wealth of the land and to a better life. He fought for a society without racism and prejudice, where people will not be judged by the color of their skin, as it happened during the evil system of apartheid that he fought relentlessly. In his honor and memory, let us rededicate ourselves to unity as we fight racism and build a non-racial society. Let us commit ourselves to working together in unity to build a better South Africa a country that Comrade Lutz would be proud of. In that way, we would be taking forward his legacy and that of all our illustrious leaders who sacrificed a lot to bring about freedom and democracy in our country. We in the ANC have an added burden because it does not help comrades that we stand afar. We don't participate because we need the participation of everyone, particularly comrades who have views. We need these views within the organization. We need the constructive advice within the organization. Because it is only, that's my view, the ANC that will take people to prosperity. It therefore needs to be strengthened all the time. As long as we have the strength, let us use the strength within the movement to make it stronger. Let us help those who might have lesser knowledge and history of the organization to enlighten them within the organization. We need to do that in an organized fashion. Comrades, we extend our deepest condolences to the family and friends of Comrade Lourdes. 
He has traveled a long journey. He has played his part, and we are all proud of his selfless and meaningful contribution to our organization and to our country. In him, we see a leader, a comrade, who has played his part. To you, Comrade Stuart, Hambagas, Kavala Makawe, Sosalum Kondo Sizwe, Kokelietu, Ku African National Congress, a father to many, a brother to many of us, an uncle to many, a member and a mentor and a husband. May his soul rest in peace. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. President, for that eulogy.